Typically, we begin creating each lesson by starting with the theme or the um, science concept, and then we select trade books that um, help the, guide the students through the inquiry. But sometimes we find a really good book that we just love, and we develop a science lesson around it. Lucas and his loco beans. We found that book and we thought, oh, there's a jumping bean lesson in there somewhere. And the book, um, If I Built a Car, um, is a read aloud that our, our sons both love. And so we decided to um, do an engineering lesson around that book. I think another example is when Science and Children has certain themes for that particular month. Um, and the editor asks us to try and connect it to the theme. So there's um, continuity through the journal. I think part of that is that's where you come up with an activity that's perhaps a tried and true activity, and then you go looking for the books that might match those points. My favorite lesson is uh, roller coaster, and I just I love to do that lesson with kids because they get to. Um, make model roller coasters out of foam pipe insulation and they use foosballs and they have all these different roller coaster challenges and it just really gets kids excited about learning about force and motion. And teachers have a lot of fun with that lesson too in, in our workshops. I think one of my favorite ones is related to the books. Um, I took a walk in secret places where students go out and actually find nature wherever they are which shows that you can actually um, incorporate environmental concepts in cities and areas on schoolyards. So I think it's just a great way to show them what they're missing every day by having them observe a little bit more closely. I think they're very similar. They all engage the students um, with a trade book and um, follow the scientific inquiry process. I think that the um, Picture Perfect Science lessons are a little different in that they have maybe more um, student pages, did you say? No. And they, the Picture Perfect Science lessons seem to take a little bit longer. They're more, more like units than lessons. It might take three, four, five days to complete um, the whole lesson where um, with Science and Children and the Teaching Through Trade books, we're limited to 1,500 words in the column, so the lessons are just a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of adaptation, I think, that needs to um, be modeled when the column is used. We provide the outline and the information, um, whereas I think when you look at the chapters in Picture Perfect Science, um, Karen and Emily have done a really great job of laying out more information so teachers who might not be familiar with doing science, they can actually do science a lot easier because the information's there. Well, we're both former elementary teachers, and we realized how engaging these books were with our students. The kids just love them, and so we thought it would be a great way to um, bring them into a science lesson. So we um, used the picture books to um, engage the students as well as explain concepts throughout the lesson. We, st we started the whole thing with a Toyota Tapestry Grant back in 2002. We'd been using picture books and we'd been writing some lessons and so we applied for this grant and there was a new category called science and literacy. So we decided to use the 5E model and bring in inquiry and bring in the picture books and um, we received that grant and um, we really always credit Toyota and NSTA with giving us our jump start and getting this whole thing started um, because it all started with that first grant proposal. We got all the picture books to use with the teachers in our district. We were able to purchase um, subs so that teachers could be trained and give the teachers all the supplies they needed to do the lesson. So that's really where it all started. One of the benefits is that I think it helps, they help teachers integrate science and reading and literacy. And for the kids, it really gives them a context for the concepts that they're learning. If, if the concept's part of a story or something that they can relate to, it, it just gives them that context and, and makes it more, the, the content more approachable, more, um, just easier for kids to understand and relate to. And I think when you look back at the research, both the integration, which is important in today's day because time is so short in the classroom, as well as the comfort level teachers have with using picture books and trade books, I think it's a win-win for both the students and the teachers because students, especially the younger grade students, are used to having um, information in context 
like Emily said, um, in terms of understanding storyline rather than a textbook, which tends to be a lot more factual information. I think a common concern is how do I fit it all in? How do I do all the subjects that I'm responsible to teach? Um, and I think that when they see the lessons and we model the lessons, they, they, they can see how we can bring all the pieces together through a science concept. Another question we get is where do we get the books? And um, you know, the NSTA has been great. NSTA Press has put together book collections so that you can just buy the whole collection, every book that's featured within a Picture Perfect Science book, you can buy the collection for. So that's made it a lot easier for teachers. And where do I get the materials? NSTA has those as well. So um, that just makes it a little bit easier for everybody. I think one of the things is, while the books we've chosen have already been reviewed, sometimes it's very difficult to find quality children's books that have accurate science concepts. Mm -hmm. um, many books have misconceptions. So I think if a teacher tries to substitute a book, for example, because they can't locate a book, that might be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we make sure when we review them, the books are accurate science content that won't promote misconceptions. Mm -hmm. I think inquiry just takes time. To do a do a scientific inquiry right, and sometimes it t might take a few class periods. I think that might yes. be a challenge for some teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we use fiction quite a bit in our lessons. We use we we like to do fiction nonfiction pairs. So we might use a book like Leo Cockroach just to get the kids excited and thinking about toy testing. And is toy testing a real job? Uh, then they get the opportunity to test some toys and they test it on safety and on fun. So they give the toys ratings and then we graph that and we talk about how companies will use lots of different toy testers and take all of that data and decide which toys to market. So um, you know, some of the books are like that where they're just to get the, the kids interested. Um, we don't get to decide anymore what we teach. We all, in wherever, whatever state you're teaching in, you know exactly what you're supposed to teach for your grade level. So um, the art of teaching now is getting the kids to want to know what we have to teach. So a lot of times a book, a, a fictional story can really get the kids interested in wondering about the topic. And sometimes we intentionally select a fiction book that has some misconceptions in it, but we use it later on in the learning cycle and allow the students to point out what's wrong with the book. After going through the inquiry, they can understand um, what's right and what's wrong with the book. And they enjoy that and have, have a lot of fun with that. I yeah. Think. And I think one of the things that the column also does is we try to provide the purpose for reading when we ask the teachers to introduce a book. So using, um, providing actually the type of reading for students and the information you're asking the students to, you're kind of guiding them without telling them and that'll help them pick out what you are asking them to do and avoid the misconceptions as well. We do. We have, um, in more Picture Perfect Science lessons, we have a lesson called Imaginative Inventions and that's the one that features um, the book Imaginative Inventions and Leo Cockroach, Toy Tester. And it's, it's all about um, improving inventions and um, the fact that not all inventions are something brand new, that sometimes it's an improvement on something that already exists. And in Picture Perfect Science, we have um, a lesson called Brainstorms that's also about invention, but it's for higher grade levels. Uh, what else do we have here? In Picture Perfect, we also have um, two lessons that feature the engineering design process. We have um, Secrets of Flight, where the students design gliders and make modifications to them, test them. Um, and then we also have a lesson called If I Built a Car, and the students really learn and, um, what, what engineers do in their work. And they learn, they actually design um, an assembly line and test it. I think one of my favorite um, STEM activities is If You Build It, where students are actually looking at um, the construction of a bridge and what kind of design actually will allow them to hold more weight on that bridge using only paper and tape. So I think that involves the design process as well as understanding some science concepts. It gets into the technological aspects and the math ties in because the bridge has to be a certain length um, and span a, uh, go over a certain span. And also in um, teaching science through trade books, we have a lesson called How It's Made. 
and the kids learn the difference between the natural world and the designed world and they learn about how different things are made you know even just the pencil that you use every day where does it come from what parts are natural what parts are man-made and um, how is it all put together I think having students understand that engineering is really not necessarily the building or construction, but the process by which you think through the problems and the problem solving. I think using some of the trade books actually ends up being a good model for the students because they see characters trying that out and characters going through the process. And if the teacher springboards on that and connects it, they can then have the kids going through the process. So I think it's a good way to have a friendly, non-threatening character show them what the process is first. And, and picture books can take something like, um, and I, if I build a car, something like a car that all kids are familiar with, and talk about all the different engineers that were part of putting that car together, that there's electrical engineers, there's um, mechanical engineers, all kinds of engineers and designers. So if, if we can apply it to something the kids know very well, they're just gonna relate to it better. One of my favorites is A Sense of Wonder by Rachel Carson. I think it's just so important to take your students and your own children outside and let them experience the natural world and, and kind of get a feeling of the joy and the excitement of that kind of discovery. So I think that's a great book to share with um, students. Uh, mine is a picture book, <laughs> and, but it's a picture book for, ever, for people of all ages and it's called A Cool Drink of Water. And it's got a message that's important for everyone, and the, the pictures and the, um, the text really do a good job of, of delivering the message that water is something that's common to everyone, um, to, to all mankind, and the importance of clean water for everyone. Um, so I, I just think it's an important message. It has some information in the back about how you can get involved in helping um, people in developing countries get access to clean water. I just think it's a beautiful book and has a great message. I think I have two. The first one is the story, uh, the story of science series. And I think that's a really great series to help people understand how we've gotten to the point we have in today's day and age. And we can look back. Um, and it's well done because it's informative, but it's not scientific in nature. It tells the story. And students can see or adults can see how we've gotten to this point over time. And I think the second one I've recently read is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks because I think that shows that with science there can be both positive and negative consequences and decisions have to be made that weigh all aspects of that as we move forward. I think reading is important and we often forget that picking up an actual book is as engaging as watching something on television or picking up some type of electronic device in today's day and age. And if we can keep the sense of wonder alive with having kids explore things that they don't encounter every day through books, I think we're going to be better off in the future. And, and picture books in particular are not limited to using with just young elementary school students. They, um, the benefits of using those books go throughout all the grade levels. If you have a good picture book, anyone of any age is going to enjoy it. And the benefits of reading aloud our, our, the research shows that reading aloud is the most influential thing that you can do to help kids learn how to read. And it starts very young and they need to, kids need to be read to all throughout the grades.